Welcome back to the final SmackDown. Today, I'm gonna to be showing y'all how to make a duck call. All right, so the first thing we gotta do is we gotta choose our wood. I chose Bacote. I really like the way that this stuff looks. It has a nice little wood grain in there. And we have to cut it down to size. I usually use a chop saw for this, which is what I did. And the barrel is roughly three inches or more. And then the bottom is four inches, more or less, around there. I kind of make everything different sizes. I got a general principle I go by, but everything's different sizes. I like the way that they look and I like the way that they sound because they're all kind of different. Now for drilling, uh, I drilled this one to five eighths. This is your typical duck call hole. The barrels are almost always to five eighths. The tone boards, uh, everyone's a little bit different with them. I'm not gonna tell you exactly what diameter I use, but there is a flare. And I always add a little flare at the bottom. That way it's like a cone. And then the deeper you go, the narrower it gets. All right, now we're getting ready for turning. So what I'm using is a pin chuck. So if you notice, there is a groove right here and you get a pin, you stick it on there. And then when you put your wood on there, you put it on and that pin locks it in place. So now I, now I can't turn. So that's what we want. So that's all good. And now we're ready to turn. Make sure it doesn't hit your stop. There we go, that's about good. And I like to leave a little bit hanging off, that way I can clean up that back hole. And we should be good to go. Now one thing I have that I know most people don't is I have a dust system. You do not want to be breathing in wood dust. So I always turn on the uh, dust collection whenever I do it. This is the first tool I use. I use this one to knock off that corner. And then I'm going to change tools again, and then I'll get it round. So all the corners are done, so now I'm going to change tools and make it round. So this is my next tool, square on the end. watched the live streams and you guys kind of got an idea of what I'm doing so what we're gonna do now is we're going to mark where my band goes so I simply just hold it here and I push it here and then I'm going to mark it so I put I always use a sharpie because it's like a, a big thick one so I use that line because it's a big thick line and I find out if I get to the very edge I'll be fine. I won't be over it. You don't want to go over. You don't want to go under. So I know if I go to the edge, if I need to do a small adjustment, I can. So this is also going to be a different diameter. So what I do here is I get my calipers, right? You don't need to pay attention to the number. It doesn't matter what that number says. All you are is going to grab it, do it like this. I like to lock it down, take my band off. So now I have the diameter of the band. I'm going to turn it to this diameter. And I'd say, I don't know, more than 50% of the time, you will mess this up. So grab it and make it just a little bit bigger. Just a little bigger. And we're not too far off. So let's go ahead and get this done. Notice it fits. 
that's good. If this is your first time making a duck call, go very slow. Check, check every time. I've done this to the point where I can just kind of eyeball it and I can figure out what I'm doing. So it's roughly the same diameter as the band, the outside diameter of the band. So now we got to make it the inside diameter of the band. So what I, the way I do this is I change tools again. Change tools again. I get my, my parting tool right here. And I'm just going to barely touch the corner. Because if I'm going to mess up, I don't want to mess up the whole thing. I just want to mess up that very corner. I can adjust if I do that. So pretty simple. We're going to turn her on. And I'm going to go right on the corner. And notice I'm going to check. So too big. Still too big. Too small, but that's why I did that. I bet that fits. That fits. So now we just go down the line. should fit. I like to make it a little bigger so it's okay, good. So come on now it's a good tight fit. Super tight. That's what you want. Just like that we got a good fit and I gotta make it a little longer. Just like that. Let's see where we're at. A little more. All right, and then remember, I said that I leave it hanging for this reason. So now you can see there's, maybe y'all can't see that. Let's zoom in real quick for y'all. So if you're looking here, you can see I got that little lip and there's a little piece of wood outside. That's why I left this hanging over. So I'm about to get rid of this and then we should be all good. So let's go ahead and do that. I changed tools here. You could use the same tool if you want. I switched to this tool. I can't remember the name of it, but it's uh, it's like your finishing tool, really. Just like that. Nice, good fit. Everything's nice and flush. And now I like to add my I call it a uh, glue trap. So it's just a hole there. My glue will sit there and it helps make more tension for the band too. So let's get our other tool. So this is basically the shaping tool. This is the one I'll use for the rest of the call. And it's, go it's gonna go by really, really quick now. So we're about six minutes in of turning it. I can probably finish this within less than five minutes now, just with this tool. So let's get going. So I'm just gonna do a shape that I like to do, and I'm just gonna go ahead and go for it. Change tools real quick. making sure the wood is flush with the band. You want 
a little groove for your lanyard. I'm gonna go ahead and stop right here and then we'll talk about doing the lip. This part's actually probably the most important part. So if you look, uh, let's zoom in again. If you look right here, it is now flush. This is literally one, one good piece now. So this is all nice and flush. I have a spot for your lanyard. And then we have this. So this is still a little bit fat, but this is the thing. If you mess up the lip and you mess up the, uh, the base right here, the call could become too weak and break under a lot of stress. So it's better to leave this fat than leave it too skinny any day of the week. So let's go ahead and finish shaping. I gave it, I call it an echo lip because the echo calls always kind of have a little dip like that. Maybe a little more. All right, get your finishing tool, and we're just going to put it on the corner and roll it over. And that's it. That's how you make the barrel. So this part was fairly easy. Not too bad. I'm going to add, uh, well, first I got to sand it. I'm going to add some burn marks on here too. So. No, I don't want to put any there. So I got two little grooves that I'm going to use. We'll get a little piece of wire. People don't know how to do this yet. Um, I thought this was like common knowledge, but some of y'all may not know how to do these yet. So, get her nice and tight, pull. It's gonna start smoking. And boom, there's a burn mark. Boom, there's another one. This wire is very hot, do not touch it. All right, next part is just sanding. So, get a little sandpaper. If, it, if you guys are using, you know, your band, you don't want to scratch it up. This is kind of like my mock band. I don't care if this one gets messed up or not. But if you're finishing, you do not want your bands to get any kind of sanding on there or tooling on it. It'll mess them up. Notice how I don't touch it. The moment you touch this, it'll start to wobble. It'll get off center. I dropped the band, it's okay. But now I'm gonna do this. Cause we're done, basically done. I can move this. Do not move the call until you're here. You, once you take this call off, it'll never ever spin the same way again. And a pet peeve of mine is making sure that there's no sharp corners. So I just sanded that so it's nice and smooth. We can take her off. So nice and smooth. Now we got to do this. You can see that there's still a corner. You can kind of hear it. It doesn't glide. It just does that. So put her on. Come on now. Also, if you're using pin chucks, do not split your wood in half. If it doesn't want to go then you probably shouldn't do it. Make sure, like, like I already told you, I'm making sure I get that corner off of the lip. You want the lip to be very comfortable. There should be no sharp edges on there. All right, 
feel around. So there we go, everything's nice centered up. Lip looks good, not too sharp. I like to test it. It's comfortable, so we're good. Now, if you're going to CA a call, if you're gonna put CA and make it gloss, do not take it off. Well, I guess you could, but preferably do not take it off like I did. You want to sand up to about 800 grit, 600 to 800 grit. If you're going to oil the call, you still wanna take it up to a decently high grit so it's smooth, but you wanna leave the pores somewhat open. That way it can absorb the oil. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the uh, tone board. So let's just go get it. Take this off. So I'm using the collets like that. Slide her off. We'll get this one, put it on. It's not stamped yet but I like to make sure that all the calls are stamped so what I'll do is I'll go get the drill bit I use this trick does not work often it only works if you uh, drill it the same day but I'll get the drill bit I used I'll stick this on there that way everything's straight I do that. You can do the same thing if you have a uh, the indent tool, but if you can see, there's a small dimple now. So that tells me where I need this to line up. Everything's straight now. So we'll put her on right here. Slide it on. This should go right in that dimple. Make sure it lines up. Put her in there tight. This one's friction. I don't know the name of it. I can't find them anymore. But you want to make sure everything's nice and tight. Because this is literally held together by friction. And then we're going to repeat what we did for the uh, first call. We're going to make it round. So I'm going to turn on the air. We're going to make it round. Uh -huh. Make her tight. I got to keep tightening it down. So we're basically round, which is good. All right, so here we are. I got my line drawn. So this is going to be the, uh, the this long piece is going to be what goes inside of the call. And this part will be the actual stopper. So we drilled our call 5 eighths. So we have to turn this to a 5 eighths diameter. And uh, you gotta make sure it fits in the jig. So my jig is slightly smaller than 5 eighths. So I'll take it to 5 eighths and then I'll make it just a tiny bit smaller. And then I'll pick some kind of shape to do here. 
So let's go ahead and turn on the air and let's get going. I like to use my uh, shaping tool for this part. So. said before whenever we're putting the band on always 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 check multiple times don't do what I did I've done this so long I can just kind of see when it's 5 8 and if you listen there's like no wiggle room a little bit there but I'm basically to the point where I can eyeball it but that's not suggested for everyone so this next part's pretty simple uh, we're going to make this just slightly bigger than this and we're going to flare it out. So, not too hard. Pretty easy stuff. <laughs> Now I'm gonna make the lanyard groove. And now I'm gonna round this off. Let's see if it fits and see what it looks like. It may not fit yet. So, there we go. That's what we're working with as of right now. So good shaping. Everything looks about right. I gotta sand it and I have to add uh, O-ring grooves. We're not done yet. I have to make this slightly smaller to fit in my jig as well. So, the way I like to do that is I like to get my pistol, my parting tool, I just like to go up and down with it. Okay. Okay. If you 
you're watching, you probably noticed that a lot of my shoes are, or, or tools are very, very sharp. So I don't have to, I don't have to do very much work because the tools are just so sharp. So it looks like I got a little bit of a tooling mark I got to get out. So a tooling mark is just what I refer, refer to as like a little groove in the wood that doesn't quite look right. How's that looking? No tooling mark, good. So I don't typically sand this. You don't need to, it's not seen. No one will see this, it's in the call. But some people like to. Next we gotta add our O-rings, which, uh, let me get them right here. I just go ahead and get two. I just slide them up on here like that. And then I'll just put them over here. Now you want to get your jig and you kind of want to measure where it stops. That way you don't have an O-ring where the jig is. However, I know my jig pretty well and I'm not gonna do that yet because I know pretty much where to put them. So right here. And because this is still kind of big, you want to, well, you want to make it, the bigger this is, the deeper you want to make your grooves. All right. So let's see how it fits. Oh, would you look at that? Perfect. Like that. All right. So if it fits in the jig, then we're basically done. So let's go find the jig and see if it fits. And wouldn't you believe it? It fits. There's my O-rings. They're not interfering with anything. We still have this. I have to sand. There's a there's a big lip right there. I got to sand out. And then we're going to go cut it out. And then we'll get the tuning. So the way that I sand this is I get the 5 eighths. I take the collet out. And then I put this in there instead. So this is acting like my 5 eighths. Got to tighten it down a little more. It's acting like my... Uh, what what I call that thing? A pin chuck. It's acting like my pin chuck. And now I've just got to get rid of that. You could use a tool or you could just sand it. A tool's probably faster. And I'm about to use the tool. The problem with using a tool, some you, you really have to use your judgment. Is if this is wobbling off center, when you use your tool, you're gonna make a bunch of nasty marks. Once again, get inside the hole. Get rid of all those sharp corners. Let me take a look. It's looking pretty good. By the way, now you're ready for your next call. So all you do is slide your 5 eighths back in there. Let's undo her a little more. Slide your 5 eighths back in there. There you go. You're ready to turn another barrel. Get your barrel, put her on there. Let's go. All right. So let's get this and this. Put her on. Make sure everything's on good. Cinch her down. And let's go cut her out. All right, so here we are. We got this. I'm using a uh, 
I get the scroll saw with a 360 blade so I can cut in every direction. If you're using a bandsaw, basically you would start your cut here and you would just glide all the way up, take it out, you'd go here, take that out, and then you would just finish up on the inside of this cut. what I like to see. Now it just needs to go sound good. So let's go into the uh, tuning stage. All right, so we're getting ready to tune. I got my rat tail file and my normal file and my dog is sneezing. So first thing is look down the hole. If there's anything in there, if there's anything in there, get it out. Use that file. Now, if you notice, it's still in the jig. Lots of call makers will leave it in the jig the whole time and they'll file it down to the jig. Which I just got a really big lift right there. And pretty much it, yeah. If you really know what you're doing, you can take it out the jig and just go at it. <laughs> there he is, sneezing. There we go. We're pretty much, I mean, we're pretty close to done already. And uh, that's pretty dead on. With the bandsaw, you may miss a few spots with that uh, other one. You're kind of dead on. So get all your dust out there. Let's take her out. She's flat. Let's cut a cork for it. Cut and chew a cork. So, and then use some reeds. Let's see, are these already cut? Yes, I already got some reeds right here that I can use. So for this, just measure it up. If you know what you're doing, you don't have to measure, but typically you wanna measure it up so it fits. Like hold the call like this, measure everything out. Come on now. Helps to use a knife, chew your cork, put in there, you chew it to compress it. Let's go ahead and cut a reed. Always cut the reed long. Always cut her long. I cut it unnecessarily long, but that's just what I do. So keep chewing. Bounce the reed like this. If it bends that way, that's what way I'm gonna put it. All right, I think she's about done. All right, fitting's pretty good. Not not too far off. So let's see if I can use the scissors for this because I left the uh, knife at somewhere else. <laughs> Dude, these scissors are sharp. They do not play. I'm just gonna clip it. Just barely clip it. And that should get it done. Same thing here, just barely clip it. And then it was about, about this much over. So let's see the fit now. That is dead on. You can see it's perfectly flush. We'll hold it up closer, it's flush, we're good to go. Take that thing out, put this in, try to get it in the center. Typically, if you follow the tone board like I did, you don't have much work to do because tone boards are made for that reason. 
clip the reed. I'm leaving it a little long. Well, it's not that long. I always cut them crooked too, so my bad. They're always crooked. All right, and I dog ear it, so the corners are clipped. Let's see what I got. We'll use this one real quick. <laughs> It's a raspy call, super raspy. Reads a little bit too long. You could, I think y'all could hear that. Clipper, not much, not much, not much at all. <laughs> Locked up on me a little bit there at the very end. Oh, let's clip her again just barely like I'm barely touching it let's clip the corners like this oopsie they're not exactly the same but it don't matter <laughs> pretty good some call makers would be happy with that uh, me I'm a little bit picky so we're gonna file it a little bit you don't want to do it much not much at all you just want to barely touch it because that's a very key point where you file I'm file it right where the cork is it's a very crucial point where if you mess that up, you can mess up the whole call. So let's see what we got. I'm liking it, actually. I'm liking it quite a bit. Let's, uh, let's experiment. Let's get a different kind of read in here real quick. Just see what happens. Why not? All right, let's cut another one. So for reeds, I get a paper cutter like this, and I just cut a decent size strip, about like that. There we go. Let's get this reed out real quick. Cut it out right about there. All right, I lost the cord. Oh, there it is. I was about to say, you don't want to lose your cord. Let's flip it around this time. Call makers do both ways. Everyone said that they put the bend down. I always put the bend up, so. Either way works, really. All right, let's, yeah, let's hear this. Let's hear this. Not even dog deer. <laughs> interesting. Interesting, interesting. We'll go ahead, dog ear it. Why not? <laughs> Reed's just too long. It's not getting the full sound. So let's clip her a decent bit this time. Like that. I cut it crooked again accidentally. It's okay. <laughs> Take the reed, put it over here, and I'm just going to file it a tiny bit more. Not much. Just barely touching it can change the entire sound. So everything I did should change the profile, the sound profile. Pretty, pretty good. So put this back on. Stick that in there. 
All right, let's hear it. That's pretty good. Now let's put it the other way and see how that sounds because I like to hear both. But that was pretty good. That's, that's the kind of sound I like. A little raspy. That's pretty good. So we're going to leave it about there. Um... She's still raspy. I could take it down on the rasp. I kind of like the way it sounds. So we're going to leave it there. That's how you tune it. The other piece is over there. All we got to do is glue on the band and put some oil on it, and then we're done. So I'll continue this whenever I get everything finished. All right, so here it is. All done. Check this out. Made y'all look. <laughs> all right, so the band I didn't glue yet. I'm just going to let it soak in oil first. But let's go ahead and take a listen to it fully put together. So, good bite. This would definitely be a, one I guess I would use on a lake. It's definitely a lake style call. So, uh, this call is just going to be stock. If you guys want it, it'll be sitting here. Thanks for watching.